I don't know. There's just something always fun to me and like my own blindness to, <laughs> to like my um, human frailty. Super excited to talk to both of you today about Apples Never Fall. Uh, and you guys are playing brothers. So I, I would love to hear a little bit about forming that dynamic together on screen right off the bat. Well, you know, it, it sort of wasn't off the bat. We had we, we had a bit of time um, to get to know each other beforehand. Uh, when we found out, you know, who the siblings were, we were on a group chat together. And that's sort of the, the dynamic from there sort of began. But, you know, we were there, I don't know, we were, what, two, two yeah, a month? Yeah, a few weeks. Yeah, yeah, a few weeks. A few weeks before we started shooting. And that would mean, like, we were catching up for dinner. Oh, we did a lot of things. And forming that our relationship how we operate together um sort of supported how we would you know work together on set and it was such a an ease i had such faith and trust in you know jake to be there for me and i you know he's just such a incredible performer you know it, it was just like hold on hold on and enjoy the ride yeah we had a it was really uh i don't know I just think you can't like design it in a way, you know, like you just get really lucky that everybody's um, willing to give over to the experience, you know, like you just uh, go along for it. And, and I guess, I, I don't know the thing that like hanging out outside of work, eating, going to the beach, like seeing movies, whatever it is really is just creating like a trust uh, between you that then uh there are pieces that overlap into the work maybe but but really is building like a a bond and a trust with the other that then when you get into working together there's uh that's what carries over mm -hmm. you know so hopefully you've individually done your work regarding the scene or or the story and that the trust you've built outside of there lets that really come together i think mm -hmm. But yeah. you know, you're not hanging out being like, this is such a Logan and Troy moment. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> but people kind of want to like blend those. You're like, mm, not really? You know, it just builds like a fondness, a, a, a love for one another. I would hope things that are a little bit less complicated than uh, between. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> it's immediately <laughs> dramatic. <laughs> Well, I, as we kind of talk about the characters, I would love to hear from each of you what it was that drew you to your character and kind of your first impressions, either reading the script or reading the book about them. You know, I, I have shared this, but I just think it's, um, I don't know, it was a clarifying moment for me that one of the early Zoom calls with uh, Melanie and, and David Heyman and Chris Sweeney, who directed one and two and then six and seven, uh, the episodes at the end, he, Chris said... Um, he thought that every each of the Delaney men thought they were like crushing masculinity. <laughs> and that just cracked me up because I was reading it being like, Troy is crushing it. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> this guy is cool. This guy's got it going on. He's figured it out. And yeah. uh, and so I don't know. There's just something always fun to me and like my own blindness to <laughs> to like my um human frailty to go like actually you are making the same mistakes he is making you know like <laughs> your false narrative is his false narrative and uh i don't know there was i already liked the story and and the dialogue the writing and um and then that was kind of the final thing that i was like oh i'm more in tune with this than i think i am you know yeah um, plus annette benning and sam neal being attached is uh you know reason enough to go like i'll do it whatever it is i'll do it <laughs> sure, sure. I, I do appreciate both of your time delightful talking both of you well i am super excited to talk to you today about apples never fall especially you're already acting like sisters you play amy and brooke these sisters in the show uh, I would love to hear a little bit from both of you about what first drew you to your character and your initial inspiration from the book. Allison, do you want to start us off? 
Sure. Um, I I got to read the first three episodes before signing on to the show, Mm -hmm. and the writing struck me right away. It was so nuanced. There was so much going on with every character, Um, and I loved Amy Delaney. She's very different from characters I've played before. I've never gotten to play somebody who is so emotionally open and a little bit reckless and has (laughs) tattoos and... um, (laughs) you know, just doesn't really have her life together, but is trying to live in a really emotionally honest way was exciting and also a little bit scary. And the book was a great tool for um, learning about the character and learning what makes her tick. And like, obviously, when you're translating a book into a show, so much of that interior monologue of each character falls by the wayside. But I think we all could enjoy that as actors, as a tool to kind of hook into yeah, what makes them tick? Oh, yeah, absolutely. What about you, Essie? I mean, I think as soon as I received the script and the audition brief for the character, I knew that this was a character that I really, really wanted to play. There were some eerie similarities in the character's backstory in mine, in my life. So I just kind of thought something psychic is going on here. I, I need to really, I really need to manifest this one. <laughs> And um, just this this incredible team, like working with, as soon as I found out kind of who was, who was cast in the other roles, it just galvanized me to just go, wow, this is something I want so badly and something I'm so grateful to be a part of. Well, we see already that you two are like sisters <laughs> after working together. <laughs> I'm curious to hear from both of you kind of what it was like building the Delaney family uh, together on set. I hear there are group texts. There are group texts. That's the headline. There are group (laughs) texts. We made fun of our director, Chris Sweeney, for suggesting that we do group texts to bond. And then we did a group chat and we bonded immediately. It was uncanny. It was uncanny. And it's still, I mean, the group text is now over a year old. It's going strong. And it's still going strong. Definitely. And then also, you know, we got to us, we shot the show in Australia. And so we all got down there and right away we had some rehearsal time, which can be rare on a TV show. But we really had, I think, a couple weeks to yeah. to really sit together. And, you know, it was twofold. It was like we were on set talking about the characters, talking about the family dynamics. It's really intricate. Every person in the family relates to each other person in a different way, in a very specific way. So we got to kind of talk through all of those relationships. And then on the flip side, outside of work, we were all hanging out. Everyone's away from their families and we're all there together on the Gold Coast going to dinners and cabarets and stuff like that. And I actually think it was that stuff Mm. that bonded us even more and made us feel like an immediate family. And we still, we definitely feel like one still. I think so. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it is so lovely to see everyone interact on screen. Uh, Just really quickly before I let you go, I'd be curious to know what each of you want uh, audiences to take away from the series after they watch. I've, I've thought about this and I think that what I, what really strikes me about the show is that it kind of highlights that we take, we, there are things that we take for granted and something that I'd love audiences to take away from this show is just to call their mom or their dad or a loved one and just check in because life is so short and we never know what's going to happen. So just just reaching out and calling, even if it's just for a few minutes, just to say hello, I think is something I'd love audiences to take. Yeah, yeah that's thing. a good one. How about, I'm going to say uh, people embracing their truth because a big mm-hmm. part of this show is, um, you know, that through this traumatic experience of their mother's disappearance, a lot of secrets come to light and you realize how for so long this family has been keeping so much from one another and each one of them is sort of tortured in their own way by their secrets. And so I would encourage people to take from this show that you should really live in your truth and let people know your truth. Absolutely. Well, I am so excited to have gotten to talk to both of you today about the show. Super excited for everyone to get to see it. And I appreciate your time. I am so excited to talk to you today about Apple's Never Fall. Now, right off the bat, I would love to hear a little bit from you about what drew the character of Savannah, this mysterious visitor who turns everything upside down, and maybe a little bit about your first impressions from the book. Uh, first impressions from the book are that I loved the the complexities of all the characters and how um, they sort of complement each other for, for a storytelling purpose. I felt, felt it was really 
I, I guess, entertaining and humorous. I, I love Leon's writing. Um, and then when I had the opportunity to to audition for it, I felt the same way about the character. I just fell in love with her. And it's a character I've never played before, something I could really sort of, yeah, sink my teeth into and um, accept the challenge. It was, it scared me. It really scared me, actually, this role. So I'm like, I got to do it. Tell me a little bit about that. What was it that, that scared you about this role? I mean, obviously, it's, she's very big in the story. I think it's because of uh, her backstory and who she really is, which I can't um, just uh, divulge. Right. <laughs> um, so I can't say much about that, but it's definitely mm-hmm. like who who she is as a person um, uh, and and the, the the kind of responsibility of the character within this story uh, was a it was a huge um, it, was, it was a risk taking this on, not knowing if I could do it, basically. Um, Mm -hmm. But I was like, if it really scares me this much, I got to take the challenge on. And if it fails, then at least I tried. (laughs) (laughs) No, it was wonderful. No failure there. (laughs) Now, tell me a little bit about, you know, adapting a book to screen is always such an interesting thing, especially taking a character from book to screen. Was there any parts from the book that you took uh, for Savannah that was more than just from the script? Um, yeah, I definitely f- went through the book and highlighted quite a few things that Leon had described about her that weren't necessarily um, in yeah in this in the scripts or you know obvious to anyone else that sort of gave me a bit of life. Um, uh, again, something that if I tell you what those are, it will be a spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> we got to keep the mystery going a little bit longer. <laughs> Well, and you have such a wonderful connection on screen, especially with Annette and Sam's characters. I mean, tell me a little bit about working with them and developing that. Uh, I, I was obviously like intimidated at first to work with such amazing artists and icons, um, but meeting them and working with them, they're just wonderful, hilarious, generous people who just love playing and love acting. And mm-hmm. that was really inspiring, like to be around people who just love what they do is just, I feel a testament to to why they're so good at their jobs. Um, That was really inspiring to me. Um, Constantly talking about movies and acting and and artists that we love, uh, it was just very fulfilling. And I'm so grateful to the both of them. They're incredibly generous and talented people. And I learned a lot just from observing, yeah. Well, as the show is, is ready to premiere, I'm curious if there's anything in particular that you are hoping that audiences will take away from uh, from the story or from your performance, anything that you're looking forward to there. Actually, Essie said this great thing, Essie who plays Brooke, uh, the mm-hmm. other day when we were talking about this, and she was like, I hope people when they finish watching the show call their mom. <laughs> Yeah. We're like all a loved one. So I felt that kind of encapsulated how I also feel about the show as well as it, it's got a lot about family dynamics and uh, and connection and disconnection and what that can mean for your life. So um, potentially the show could be healing as, as if anything kind of compelling as well and entertaining. Absolutely. Well, it is so wonderful to hear from you about the show. I cannot wait for everyone to get to see it. And thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. Thank you so much for talking with me today about Apple's Never Fall. Kicking things off, I'm very curious what it was that drew you to this specific adaptation because it's it's such a wonderful book and I can't wait for everyone to see uh, the show. You and me both. I'm very excited that it's about to to be out in the world. Um, What drew me to the book and to wanting to adapt it um, are many things. I literally, um, I read the galleys. I was sent the galleys by my agent. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll read this. And I bet within 10 pages, I was like, this is for me. This is for me. And I just, I loved, oh, I love Leon's work. And in this work in particular, um, she's really tackling some some very grown-up themes and some very grown-up issues in really riveting ways. And I think one of those issues is um, the complexity and contradictions of love. That love can be many things. It isn't always just a love story. Isn't just about love. It's about many things. And I felt that was just really robust and really juicy and very honest. I also loved um, the way she looked at secrets within a family, and and reminds us that no matter how much you know somebody, for how long you've known somebody, you can never know everything. And people do have their secrets, and they have them for good reason. And I thought that was amazing territory to mine as a writer and just as a person like like loving human nature, you know, that you got to really you get to really dive into those things with her work. And um, for me, that's the stuff of great drama. Absolutely. 
Now, uh, tell me a little bit about adapting it because it's kind of a complicated book to adapt. We're flashing back, we're flashing forward, and you came up with quite the interesting solution with the individual episodes. I think it works really well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. When I uh, first got the book, I was like, this will be easy to adapt. Then I started doing it. And I was like, uh-oh, uh, it, it, you nailed it. It is quite hard. It's multiple points of view, multiple timelines, um, all winding around each other, you know, um, and different versions of the truth, different versions of any any given moment, depending on whose point of view you're in. So um, for me, it was really about trying to figure out some sort of the components of that not just the then and the now, but then also the point of view. Because in an ensemble drama, I think the temptation can be, let's service all those characters all the time. And then you have nothing. So what I wanted to do was give each character their episode in a sense and sort of front burner their emotional journey, the, the, the detonation of their character in that episode that lets us do the deep character work while also having the driving mystery. And that was both like a huge challenge, but also like solving uh, a big puzzle. And who doesn't love solving big big puzzles? <laughs> so it was juggling that. And then I would say on top of that, the other thing is juggling the complexity of tone, uh, which is harrowing mystery, deep character work, and the fun, and making it all seem real every step of the way. Well, you had a wonderful cast to work with here. Tell me a little bit about, especially working with Annette Benning and Sam Neill. Amazing. I, yeah, it's I, I pinched myself many times on set. It was it was amazing to watch these people work. Um, Annette Benning was someone when I was reading the book literally uh, within the first chapter, and I was like, oh, I see this as a show, and I see Annette Benning as Joy. So she uh, was someone I wanted from the beginning. And we had these initial conversations with her, and she and I just clicked. Uh, she's so brilliant, such a generous performer. Um, and then it's really the question of who could be her husband? Who can go toe to toe with this virtuosic actor, Sam Neill? And you know, then they seemed so perfect together. Then it's like, well, who can be believably be their children? And as fans of all these people, these are incredible performers as well. Jake and Allison and Connor and Essie. Um, and kind of just looking at them, I was like, yeah, they look like a family. They look like a family. And indeed, they clicked like one. Uh, but what was very important in doing the whole palette of all of them is to find actors who can juggle just what I was saying, that complexity of tone, who can be landing the suspense one minute, and then the deep character work, and then the funny, and make it all seem real and grounded and honest. And thus a great cast. Yeah. <laughs> It's a great cast. It's a great adaptation. And I can't wait for everyone to see it. Thank you so much for talking with me today about Thank it. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it.